for Senator Seward. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. And I thank um, the Chamber um, for agreeing um, to set aside this time so that we can commemorate the first anniversary of um, the historic apology um, on uh, forced adoptions. And I would just like, I'm not going to read the whole of the apology um, <laughs> because it would take the whole time, but I did want to remind um, people about um, what, uh, what um, some of the words of the, and the sentiment of um, the national apology and also talk about some of the things that are happening since then, and I'm, I'm hopefully my colleagues will be too. Um, and today I should also point out that the Forced Adoptions Implementation um, Working Group has actually been meeting in the chamber, hence Senator Moore and I running in and out of the chamber, and I think some members of the working group um, will be joining us um, at some stage too. So, this is the document. I, oh, they're over there. Sorry, I was looking in the wrong place. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm not supposed to be waving at the gallery, but hi. I'll get in trouble. Um, and again, I'm not supposed to be using props, but this document is a copy of um, the apology, and it's been hanging very proudly in my office for the last 12 months because tomorrow is the actual day of the, the first day of the apology. And the first paragraph says, Today, this parliament, on behalf of the Australian people, takes responsibility and apologises for the policies and practices that forced the separation of mothers from their babies, which created a lifelong legacy of pain and suffering. We acknowledge the profound effects of these policies and practices on fathers, and we recognise the hurt these actions caused to brothers and sisters, grandparents, partners and extended family members. It then goes on to acknowledge these appalling practices that caused so much pain and suffering for so long, for decades in this country. But I'd also like to go to the end of the apology, because it says, we resolve as a nation to do all in our power to make sure that these practices are never repeated. In facing future challenges, we will remember the lessons of family separation a focus will be on protecting the fundamental rights of children and on the importance of a child's right to know and be cared for by his or her parents. With profound sadness and remorse, we offer you all our unreserved apology. And I'd like to remind everybody that that's what we did a year ago tomorrow. We also today passed a motion um, in this chamber, again, with the total support of the chamber, and that's one of the valuable th things that I will always remember from the Senate is that when we're dealing with important matters, we can deal across parties as a whole and recognise the importance of these very important moments in our history, because this is a, it was last year and it continues to be a very important moment in our history. Um, we again today acknowledged the ongoing pain and suffering of mothers, children and fathers affected by unethical, dishonest and sometimes illegal practices of the past. But we also went on, and this is where I want to look to the future, to commend the work of the National Archives of Australia. And Today the website was launched and they've done a marvellous job to get that done in 12 months. So congratulations, and I urge everybody to go and look at the, the website, look at the history project, and it really is going to be a very profound resource to our um, community. We also congratulate the um, Institute of Family Studies, again, who have done an outstanding job in the research and scoping work that they have been doing. The Department of Social Services, who have been doing a marvellous job supporting the working group and really trying to make sure that they implement the commitments, both the previous government and this government, to um, implementing the recommendations of the Community Affairs Report, which um, the, the, um, rec the many of the commitments that were made um, implementing those recommendations. And also, of course, to the Forced Adoptions Implementation Working Group, who have been working really hard to progress um, the recommendations. 
I do want to touch on and acknowledge that an apology is only part of the healing process. Nothing magically happens that takes away what is lifelong suffering um, and the pain that, is that has been caused by these practices. But it is, a, but it is an, an essential part of the journey. And that's why it's so important that the implementation working group is continuing to do its work, that the recommendations are slowly um, are, are getting implemented. Um, I shouldn't say slowly; they are getting implemented, and, I'm, and, and I look forward to them being implemented um, in the in the not too distant future. It is extremely important that we don't lose these recommendations or this work, and that they are implemented, because we need to be putting those supports in place to further help with the healing of these past practices. It is very important, as, it point, as we point out um, in the apology, that to, to redress the shameful mistakes of the past, we are committed to ensuring that those affected get the help they need, in, including access to specialised counselling services and support, the ability to fund the truth is freely available in freely available records and assist in reconnecting with lost family. We will never let that part of the apology go. It is absolutely critical that we continue to support people that have been affected by these past practices. I do want to take a, couple, a minute or two to reflect and it goes back to, to the comment I made about the ability of this chamber to step up to the mark when we need to. We commenced, uh, I've checked the date, it was the 15th of November 2010 when this chamber referred to the Community Affairs Committee this inquiry. And throughout 2011, from April through to nearly the end of the year to December, we held a large number of hearings. And I will never forget those hearings. I will never forget the evidence that we were given, that with the accounts that we heard were heartbreaking. And you'd go home after every hearing with your heart heavy, having heard the pain and anguish that these practices caused. And it convinced you totally that this country could not deny the pain and suffering that was caused or that these practices happened. That they have, and as was pointed out in the motion that we passed today, there's no doubt in my mind that some of these practices were illegal. That people were cheated, conned, persuaded into giving up their children. And that has had profound ramifications on, as the apology points out, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, grandparents, uncles, aunts, rippling throughout families. And for too long this country was in denial. And that caused additional pain and suffering and the sense of shame. One of the things I heard repeatedly from the accounts was the sense of shame that was imparted, particularly to mothers. And that, having, that, has, that has affected people their whole lives. We can never let that happen again, and we can never forget that this has occurred. And that's why I'm hoping that every year we can mark this apology so that we don't forget that these events occurred, acknowledge that they occurred and remember that the pain and suffering does not go away completely. People will carry that with them all their lives. We can provide support and love, remembering, acknowledgement, but you can't make it go away. But we can make sure it never happens again. And that's why the last part of the um, motion, which says, resolves to continue to do all in its power to make sure these practices are never repeated, is so essential in this motion, and it repeats from the apology itself. I will remember tomorrow, and I urge everyone tomorrow to remember 
this special day. Thank you. Senator Brown.